Greetings friend, entrepreneur, and fellow business builder. It is the final episode of the uh, 2015 Super Bowl Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads uh, program. And I'll tell you, what a finish to that game. Pete Carroll needs to have his head examined for that call down there on that line when he had Marshawn Lynch being able to take it in over three tries. Come on, that was gonna happen. Should have been game Seattle. But what about the ads? Hey, bad year, everybody agrees with that. But there are some brighter spots than others. Uh, I saw one of the, I am not a gamer, so I can't even remember the name of the game, unfortunately. But one of the game ads I thought was pretty good made you wanna buy the game. So that one was a good one. But uh, I've got Joel and Dave back with us. Dave, let's start with you. Uh, you saw some bright spots, including the cell phone charger. Why don't you talk about some of the ads you thought were good? Um, I mean, creatively, I liked the cell phone charger, and I felt like, in general, the second half ads were better than the first half. Um, I think Doritos, for several years running, if you hear my baby squealing in the background, yeah, Joel, you're, you're one of the folks that, uh, you know, you've done, along with Dave, some, some web blogs or, or, uh, or video blogs, uh, you know, series-type commercials. Doritos usually takes, I think it is three spots to run three different commercials. This year they only did one, but they have successfully kind of created a franchise there around the, uh, around the Super Bowl with their um, customer-made videos, and then they pick one that's a winner of the contest. What's your take? Well, I agree with Dave. I think uh, Doritos, even though their ads may not be that great, the ones that they pick, the reason why it's so smart is they get, uh, they get first of all, they get a bunch of content created, then those people self-promote that content that's selling their chips, so, first of all, when the people make the commercials, they're buying Doritos to use in the commercials. Then they are, are self-promoting that to their own networks on Facebook, etc., trying to get people to vote for their ad. And it's just a lot, even before the Super Bowl ever goes, they got a bunch of free advertising and selling chips along the way. It's yeah. We deal for Doritos. It's just, it's just it, it is about the perfect combination of traditional media with the new media, and Doritos has mastered it year after year with this campaign. Let's talk sex a little bit, though. Okay, there are two basic ads that really played on sex. In the past, GoDaddy's done it, but GoDaddy's ad was flat out boring this year. Um, they've abandoned that when they got new ownership of the company. But Carl's Jr., now those of you in the East probably didn't see this ad, but in the West, Carl's Jr. had a very pro provocative ad. We'll give you a look at it. And uh, also, there is the Victoria's Secret ad. And Dave, you were making some comments about the fact you like those ads. Well, duh, who doesn't? But does sex sell? Well, I think, you know, these are two brands that, uh, well, let's start with the Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr.'s been uh, using pretty girls to sell hamburgers for a while. Um, it, they are the only, when you think about fast food, sexy doesn't come to mind. Uh, and I think they're alone in that, in, that, uh, in that product, in fast food, with selling uh, their burgers with pretty girls, sexy girls. I think it's a win for them from a branding perspective. I don't know if anybody's going to go out and feel like, wow, if I eat burgers like this, I'm going to score a Kate Upton or a whatever the new girl's name was who, for my money, is better looking than Kate Upton. So I was pleased with that. Victoria's Secret, same thing. I mean, their slogan at the end, the real game, you know, let the real games begin after the Super Bowl. You know, um... <laughs> I don't know. Most Joel, I got a question for you on that. My question for Joel is, Joel, are the Victoria's Secret ads for men or for women? Who are they advertising to? Well, I don't know that it matters uh, because, uh, you know, if, if, a, it, it's, if a guy wants uh, his girl, his wife or girlfriend, hopefully his wife, uh, to look sexy, then, uh, you know, there's a good chance she's going to go to Victoria's Secret. Um, 
you know, she might not, but uh, they've got a real edge on that market. And, it, and in a case when you're selling lingerie, then yes, I would say sex sells. I don't know if I agree with Dave when it comes to Carl's Jr. Um, they may have market share in your mind. I don't know that it translates to selling burgers. But in the case of lingerie, it, it only makes sense that in that industry. It is, after all, the product. Well, guys, give us a final tally. I mean, what do you think of the, uh, the whole collection this year? Would you give it overall a good, a bad, or an ugly? Dave, why don't you go first? Uh, I'd go with ugly to bad. Um, I think for the most part, there was a lack of creativity. No major standouts. Even, even among those, like um, the tortoise and the hare, uh, Mercedes ad, even among the visually cool ads, they weren't that visually cool, heavy on the, um, the special effects, and it was, it was just kind of there. So I'd say mostly pretty lame, pretty boring, and as we get, as far as selling products, pretty bad. And your take, Joel? I agree with Dave. Uh, you know, the, 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 I, I found myself uh, saying about the, the best ads in the group, that one at least wasn't bad. You know, so that was about the best you could say. There was one ad I wanted to mention that I did think was good and managed to be somewhat entertaining. Uh, and it was, I think, after the game, but it was an AT&T ad, AT&T U-verse, where the dad is coaching all the different sports. And uh, so it was kind of fun to see, and the, the entertainment grew from the benefit, which is you get all these different channels. And so it was very integrated with the benefit and somewhat entertaining, and I, I felt like that was a bright spot at the end of the, end of the day, but uh, for the most part, ugly. All right, and so that's about uh, where I stand with it as well. And mark my words, folks. This, there was far less work done to create engagement with the audience. There was far less stuff driving you to an internet. There were a lot of hashtags, but not like last year was it, you know, tell the, what the ending of the, of the spot should be and vote on it. So, the, so that's determined. None of that kind of engagement that I saw this year compared to previous years. And I wonder what that says about both the brands that are advertising and whether those tactics worked at all last year. And if they didn't work, what does that bode for the future of advertising on television and the interaction of advertising on TV or traditional media with the, the new media? And is the new media really working? These are big questions that will need to be answered. And meanwhile, who knows what's going to happen for advertising in the Super Bowl from here on out. That's about it for now. Thanks for joining us. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your comments below. Remember, when you comment, there's a good chance you might win a prize worth up to $197. Check us out next time for our next episode of The Normal Boring Everyday, Good, Bad, and Ugly Ads.